hello thank you for watching my channel today my name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf and today I'm excited to um, film a video about my plans for June um, June's TBR you may be able to hear my kids playing outside they're quite loud so I apologize if you can hear playing plus or minus squabbling <laughs> outside um, so we were in this lovely summery weather I even got sunburn at the weekend and um, now it's very windy and overcast again and the jumper's back on um yeah but the garden is looking amazing the flowers and the plants are all like coming up now and looking really good so that's nice at least um anyhow um what i decided was i was talking to joe my friend last night about our book goals and I realised it's almost halfway through the year so I maybe I should focus a little bit more on my goals for the year because I've done about a third of them and we're coming up to halfway. So my TBR I based a lot of it on um, my book goals and the other thing was I really liked this morning I had messaged Gemma or commented on Gemma's video from Gemma of Books about um, her TBR and how ambitious it was and she said if you finish your TBR then it obviously wasn't long enough and I was like yeah I like that because it does give you options if you have an overly ambitious TBR each month. So without further ado let's just get on and let me tell you what the books are. So one of my goals is to read three books by Japanese authors. For this one I've chosen Heaven by Miyako Kawakami. Um, I've not read any of her work before but I know it's like really well thought of. I know this book is about bullying, it's about uh, two teenagers one of whom has um, amblyopia which is like a lazy eye um, and he's bullied for that and there's a young girl who's the same age and she's also being bullied but it doesn't say what for and they grow this close friendship but it questions whether that can form a friendship when it's based on terror. Um, I think this is supposed to be quite a hard read but it's a short read and it's also um, shortlisted for the International Booker. It was two of my favourite booktubers favourite books last year and um, so I'm think that one's going to be really good um the another one i wanted to do was read um three i think books from the npr book concierge list so heather at soggy expat book nerd introduced me to this list where npr pick their favorite books every year and i think you can filter the list to find sort of what you're looking for particularly but what i did every i've gone through every year ever and written down all the books that i've got on my TBR that have made that list and I've made a bullet journal spread because you know I love making bullet journal spreads and I want to choose three of those and the one that I, I quite fancy some fantasy um I'm in the mood for a bit of fantasy and so I've got Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim which is a YA fantasy book and it's beautiful look how lovely that is it's quite a chunkster but when I actually opened it the pay the font's quite big the spacing's quite big and it looks like it'll be quite a quick read um and i think there's other i think this is now part of a series so this is about um it says on the back a uh, princess in exile a shape-shifting dragon six enchanted cranes and an unspeakable curse it will take more than magic to find their way home but it's just so beautiful um yeah the um the cover definitely pulled me into this one i've owned this one for quite a long time this book came out in 2021 so I and I bought it when it had just come out so that's what I'm really looking forward to um I then have some library books because obviously I have to sort of focus on them so that they don't get fines or from being laid back and anything like that one of these I really started so this is A Life of One's Own by Joanna Briggs Biggs sorry not Briggs I saw this on someone's channel and I can't remember it might have been Lauren's um channel um, and I ordered it from the library. This is nine, about nine women writers beginning again. So the first author that I read um, is Mary Wollstonecraft. Um, and it basically starts by, say, the writer, the sorry, the author of the book, um, sort of starts there about how her marriage is broken up and then leads into Mary Wollstonecraft's story and initially it was a little bit like a mini biography of her 
but then it did delve in a bit deeper into her writing and stuff um, which is what I wanted um, the next person on the list is George Eliot um, so I am going to give this a couple more goes um, so the first one was good in the end but when it started it was a bit slow so I'm going to carry on with um, George Eliot and see how I get on with that one the next one is also a library book and I love the cover. I think I might have seen this on Mercedes channel as an anticipated read, but I'm not 100% sure. This is uh, This Family by Kate Sawyer, which I also reserved from the library. And this is set over the course of a single day. And I do really like books which are set over the course of a day. Um, this is following a family who have come together at the house where they all grew up um for uh, mary's wedding and i think that the house is described as a sanctuary and a battleground i think there's been a lot of family drama family fallouts um and it talks about sort of 40 years worth of history all coming together on a late summer's day for this wedding i don't think you can see the cover because of the shininess but it's this like um candlelit dining table out in the garden it's a really beautiful cover um so that one really intrigued me and then the other library book that I got, brand new. So this is, um, I love the cover of this again, A House for Alice by Diana Evans. This is about a woman called Alice whose husband has died, she's elderly, she's lived in Britain for 50 years and she wants to live her last years of her life in the country of her birth, which I, I think in my head it's Nigeria, but I may have just made that up. <laughs> um, and it's about her children who were kind of worried about her leaving the country on her own at her age. It's about the um, the things that the children are going through as adults in their own lives. And it's about how we um, balance our own needs and our parents' needs and wanting to make our parents happy and stuff like that. I think the cover is stunning. I really love, I really love it. And it's like, looks so shiny and new as well. I might be the first person to borrow it, I don't know. But um, yeah, so I am really looking forward to this. Look, see, I've started saying it again. Um, and then the last library book that I have is one that I talked about in my haul. So I only briefly mentioned it again, which is Yerba Buena by Nina Lacour about two women in America who are I believe like in their 20s one who keeps changing her college degree one who has run away from her family and is a bartender um who is quite sought after and they go and work at this restaurant called Eba Yerba Buena which is quite a sort of a fancy restaurant and um, meet each other there so that's all the library books I've got on my list and then I thought I'd just add in a few more for my goals so I've got one which is really, really old. So this is from my 2013 haul. Um, so I've got three books left from 2013 and I want to read or if I don't get on with them, because obviously it was 10 years ago, I made DNF, whatever, but I want to get those three books done this year. And the first one is one my mum told me to read. And this is The Guilty One by Lisa Bannatine. Ballantine. I don't know if you can remember this mum but you really loved this book and I remember you told me all about it and um, lent it to me. Um, this is a crime, I don't know if it's a thriller but it's a crime novel. Um, so it's um, a little boy is found dead in a children's playground. Daniel Hunter has spent years defending lost causes as a solicitor in London but his life changes when he's introduced to Sebastian, an 11 year old boy accused of murdering the young boy. As he plunges into the muddy depths of Sebastian's troubled home life, he thinks back to his own childhood in foster care and to Minnie, the woman he's loved saved him and she, until she too betrayed him so badly that he cut her out of his life. So yeah, that is that one. And then I have got, I've taken a dust jacket off this and so now you can't really see it probably. This is Yellow Face by Rebecca Kwong, um, which I also showed you in my haul. It's got like a little bit of embossing that you can just see the eyes here. But the actual cover, as I'm sure everyone knows, is this beautiful bright yellow with the same eyes on and the gorgeous typewriter font down the side. Um, as we know, this is about a Chinese woman who's written a book about Chinese people in the Second World War. She dies in an accident. Her best, well, her friend, probably not her best friend because she's treating her really badly, but her friend 
um, steals the manuscript and passes it off as her own. And this is a book about racism in publishing. And I chose two really small books to go alongside because there's a lot of quite big books on that list. So this this fulfills a, another prompt on my um, goals to read three of my favourite booktubers' favourite books over the last couple of years. And I've got Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own, which I've never read. This was a favourite of Ruby Granger's, who is one of my favourite booktubers. And um, a tiny little book, but um, a non-fiction and one that we've all heard of. I've only read... Mrs. Dalloway and Orlando by Virginia Woolf and I really liked them both. And then I've got another non-fiction which a patient gave me and I'm not sure, I think this might be self-published, this book, possibly. But a patient gave it to me because they suffered with this condition and I referred them about it and they were really grateful and so they got me this book which was super kind. And this is A World Without Smells by Lars Linkvist. And so this uh, man has a nosmia, which basically means that you can't smell anything. And I know that's something which affected people who, a lot of people who had COVID as well. It just, I just thought that the, the back sounds um, quite interesting. So imagine a world where smells do not exist. How does food taste without smells? And how do you avoid eating bad food? How do you keep yourself clean, your cloths and your home clean? Maybe it means clothes. <laughs> if there are no smells to tell you that things are dirty. In his book, Lars Linkvist tells you about his anosmic life, about living with a, without a sense of smell, living in a world where everyone around him perceives a dimension that has never existed in his world. I thought that sounds really interesting. And then, so that's all of my physical books. I also have a plan to read at least one book on my Kindle every month, which I'm doing fine on. Um, but I've chosen two books on my Kindle to add to the TBR as well. Um, I try to remember what I chose now. Oh yeah, so one of them was um, the Wiz A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin because I've just wanted to read this for ages. I bought it on my Kindle a really long time ago and I know that's a series, I think a trilogy. Um, but the first volume is really small. So I'd like to read that one. That's a fantasy book. And then I also have um, What Willow Says by Lynn Buckle. And this would fulfill a prompt of being one of Jan Campbell's favorite books. Um, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. Um, so this is about a girl I believe called Willow who is um, deaf and I think she lives with her grandmother and they make up their own sort of sign language to communicate with each other and then when Willow goes out into the wider world she can't communicate with other people because well she can obviously but she can't communicate as easily with other people because um this language that they've made up themselves isn't something that she can use with other people I think that's what it's about that's from from memory so I think that's what it's about then I have a couple of things to finish. So I have, um, last month I started reading Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak, which I'm really enjoying, but I had to put it down to read our book club book, which I've now finished. So I've picked up um, Bridge of Clay again. It's about, it's set in Australia. It's about five brothers, one of whom is called Clay. Um, they refer to their dad as the murderer and their mum is, no, is dead and we I don't know if, that it linked those two things and so they're these five brothers who are kind of um sort of teenage to adult who were growing up um kind of caught with quite a sort of wild lifestyle um they're they're like scrappers they're sort of um quite um wild boys and um i love the the writing style is really cool it's very unique the writing style of the book i was very immersed in it um, I'm really enjoying it until I put it down. So I've just started picking that one up again yesterday. So I'm going to finish that before I start any more of the other books. And then I'm still listening to A Place For Us by Fatima Fahin Mirza, which I'm really, really enjoying. Um, it's read by um, a narrator who has an Indian accent and that really brings the book to life as well. Um, that's about a, a family who have moved to America from India um, the parents are Indian and the three children have grown up in America. We know that, so there's two daughters and a son and it's the eldest daughter's wedding day at the beginning of the book and the son has come back to the family for the first time in a long time. He's been 
cast aside from the family, we don't know why yet, and it's going back in time through their story to the parents meeting, to um, the children being born, to different events in the children's lives, and how they found it growing up with Indian parents in America. Their parents are very strict. Um, they're not allowed to go to parties or hang out with their American friends and stuff like that. And um, it just discusses a lot of sort of cultural issues as well. And it's really well written and really, really good. And so I'm going quite slowly on the audio because previously when I was reading Dick, when I was listening to a lot of Dickens on audio, there was quite a time pressure to finish them. And I ended up listening to a lot of audiobooks and realising that I wasn't really listening to other things as well that I wanted to. Like sometimes there's a podcast I want to listen to or I want to listen to music and I was kind of feeling like a pressure of, oh, I better listen to my audiobook. And now I've really got back into like how much I love listening to music as well. And so often in the car, instead of putting my audiobook on or in the shower, sometimes I'll fancy listening to music instead. And that's been really nice. So, and I'm enjoying taking the audiobook slowly and just listening to it when I want to. Sometimes I'll listen to a lot in a day, like I'll have it on while I'm cleaning or doing the washing and stuff like that. And other times I just fancy like listening to a podcast or something. And I think it's really nice to have a bit more of that balance in um, doing other things when you want to rather than feeling like you always have to be reading which is quite nice so yeah so that is my plans for the month um, I will not I wouldn't imagine I'll be getting through all of those books in June um, but I do need to boost my numbers up as well I'm a little bit behind on my reading goal not that that matters it's just a target it's not like the end of the world if I don't read the whole hundred books this year but I would like to um, so if you've read any of them, let me know your thoughts, um, let me know what your reading plans are for June, um, and I hope you have a really lovely week, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!